In this section, we're going to look at setting up our MIDI devices and how timing is controlled within Sonar. Let's look at setup first. When you first start Sonar or add a device for the first time, you may see this dialog box warning you of no output or perhaps no input MIDI drivers. To set up MIDI devices from here, click on the relevant Choose MIDI Devices Now button. To continue with no devices, click on that option, and if you don't want to see this warning box every time you start Sonar, check the Don't Show This Again option. If you don't see this but want to change the MIDI device setup anyway, you'll need to open the MIDI Preferences by clicking on Edit Preferences or pressing P, and then under the MIDI section, click on Devices. Either way, you'll end up at the MIDI Device Preference page. Similar to the Audio Device view, this will list all the MIDI devices attached to your system. If it's not displayed in this list, then the drivers are not installed correctly and you'll need to reinstall them. You should only check the inputs and outputs that you want to use. That's whether you're using the device as an instrument or as a control surface. To rename the device name to a more friendly one, double click on the one you wish to change in the friendly name column. The name you enter here is the one you will see displayed when selecting MIDI inputs and outputs within the main program. To use friendly names, you need to enable the Use Friendly Names to Represent MIDI Devices option box towards the bottom of the window. If you check the Warn About No MIDI Devices box, you will receive a warning when there are no MIDI devices enabled similar to the one that we saw at the start of this video. The Move Check Devices to Top button can be used to reorder the MIDI outputs if you wish. To do that, uncheck all of them except the one you want in position 1 and then click the button. Then check the one you want in number 2, click the button again. Repeat this process as many times as necessary. Here's what I mean. To move the EMUX MIDI Tuba 2 to the top, I check that. Move check devices to top. Then I can select the second one I want there, for example the PCR. Check it again. And so on. That will reorder all of the devices into the device order that you want. Once you've renamed all of the devices that you want, and set the order how you want them, we can click on OK and the devices will now be available for selection within Sonar. There are also various options that we need to check and these are found in Preferences in the Playback and Recording tab under the MIDI heading. Let's look at some of these options. If you check Allow MIDI Recording Without an Arm Track, MIDI will be recorded into any MIDI track with an input assigned whenever you press Record. There's no need to arm an individual track. This could be quite a dangerous option because you'll end up recording MIDI data that you perhaps don't mean to. Be careful if using this. The next seven options all cover what is recorded. Notes is obviously for note data, pitch duration, etc. Key aftertouch is an action you perform after you've first struck a key but before it's released. You might press down hard on one key or all the keys in a chord, for example, and that data is recorded if this option is selected. However, not all keyboards transmit this data and you'll need to check your keyboard's manual. Controller events to record any controller actions as you perform them, such as sustain pedal events. Patch changes checked will record any real-time patch changes that you make while playing. Channel aftertouch is similar to key aftertouch, but rather than data being sent for each individual key in a chord, only one key's data is sent and all notes on that channel will respond to it. Choose to record that or not with this option. When pitch wheel is checked, any use of the pitch wheel will be recorded. And system exclusive, SysX as it's known, is the MIDI's method of sending specialised messages. Patch memory data dumps, for example, are sent as SysX messages, as are GM resets. Choose to record that or not here, as well as set options for that data. The number of buffers is the number of buffers set aside for that data, and 64 works well for most users, but try a larger number such as 128 if you get problems using a lot of SysX data. Echo system exclusive should be selected, if you want to send the SysX messages to other ports. These ports are chosen in the MIDI SysX Echo ports list by checking the ones you wish data to be sent to. In the Playback section, we find the setting for how many buffers to use for preparing playback. The default is 250 milliseconds, 
but if you experience playback problems such as dropouts while playing synths or missing notes, try increasing this. 500 is a good starting point, but the larger the value, the more delay you'll notice when using MIDI effects. This option in conjunction with the input-output buffers in audio sync and caching that we looked at earlier is one of the secrets to minimising dropouts and playback problems. Always echo current MIDI track means that incoming MIDI data is always echoed from the current track in focus. This is regardless of that track's input echo button position. If you don't want that behaviour, you'll need to uncheck that here. We'll be looking at MIDI echo later. In the MIDI file section, we use always use SysX banks for MIDI file to choose how any SysX data in imported files is stored within Cerner. Checking this option will store SysX data in banks that are selectable from the event list rather than one long stream of data. Any SysX data events longer than 255 bytes will be stored in a bank regardless of this setting. Write cable meta events to MIDI file allows you to specify which output port number any SysX data is sent to. The output select number will be inserted in the front of each track of a Format 1 MIDI file. Once we're happy with these settings, press OK. Now let's look at timing. Obviously as a music production suite, Sona needs everything to be in time. MIDI tracks playing back with audio tracks for example. Now every digital device will have its own internal clock. Sound cards, hardware synths, drum machines etc. And there's always slight variations between them. Therefore we need everything to be controlled from the same clock source. Let's open up the Preferences Project Clock and look at the options there. Although we are using the Preferences page, these settings can all be changed via the MIDI Sync module in the control bar. We'll be looking at that in more detail when I cover the control bar modules. The clock source setting decides where the timing information comes from. Internal is from the computer's motherboard, audio from the sound card or interface, and either of these two choices will make Sona the master and other devices the slaves. If a device is set up as a slave, it will wait for Sona to start before they start themselves. If your project contains only MIDI, the most efficient choice is internal, but if your project contains any audio, you must use the audio choice and allow your sound interface to set the timing. If there's any audio present in your project, Sona will set this option automatically. Other MIDI devices can still be controlled by Sona using MIDI synchronization. If MIDI timecode is needed to be sent, Sona will send it regardless of the clock setting. When MIDI sync is selected, the clock is from an external device and Sona can either be the master or slave. If Sona is a slave, audio playback is not supported. SMPTE or MTC means the clock is read from a timecode signal, be that from an external device or generated by Sonar. This is where the project's time base is set. This is done by adjusting the ticks per quarter note, often referred to as a PPQ or pulses per quarter. For most users, the default of 960 is perfectly adequate. That means there are 960 clock pulses per quarter note, but if you use a different time signature, such as 7-8 time, you would need to set a figure divisible by 7, such as 168, to get an accurate note representation. That's the end of MIDI setup part 1. In part 2, we'll look at how we sync those external devices with Sonar.